we want to talk a little bit about the difference between structure and struct and class. In fact, in C++, a structure is almost identical to a class. And they made it so to make C and C++ mostly compatible, so that you can use C code compiled with C++ almost seamlessly. The only difference here is that by default, a class, when you use the keyword class, everything is a private member, except if you specify this visibility. But everything in a struct is by default a public member. And of course, because that was the expectation from C. So generally to make the, make the difference clear, it's good practice to use struct only for data containers and some helper functions, not for any kind of sophisticated logic or data model from UML. Yeah, so struct is very plain old data type while a class contains the functions with a lot of logic and real world objects. Okay, so that was the main difference. Now let's have a look at some more examples. Let's model person and people. Let's talk about a very naive model of a person. We have as data, a name and a hair color. And uh, well, what we can do, we, we put them as a private members and now we create accessors or assessors as some people say. Um, so for getters, our getters and setters. So you want to set the name and get the hair color and so forth. Being able to change those variables. Let's have a look at a more detailed implementation. So we can use an enum like we know from C, that we know from C, like with the different hair color, like black, blue, red, green, brown. We declared a new data type, hair color type. Now I create a person boss. I set the name to my boss. He has hair color black. I can print this person here. Yeah? <coughs> here we see the implementation, but there is no specific details. So it's be basically getters return those private data members and setters set them. Yeah, so this code works pretty seamlessly. So there is a drawback to this kind of implementation. So a programmer that uses a person object can change easily hair color and name by calling those setter and getters. But when you try to change those in real life, it's typically a bit more complicated, right? So when you change the name, you can't change the name hundreds of thousands of times and you, certain names are invalid, stuff like this. All this can be implemented now in this data function. And likewise, when you, it should be prevented that the hair color can be changed at all. At least your natural hair color cannot be changed. Well, maybe you get gray when you get older or white. Some people have that, right? Um, but other than that, there is typically rarely a change of your hair color happening. So we should control this change and we should add a constructor to be able to set initially the name and the hair color. Right here, we, we parameterized this person object by calling those setters. But if we disable those setters or limit them, their abilities, maybe we must provide a constructor or maybe we remove them at all, right? Maybe we, we should not have a set hair color, but we should have a fun new function called dye hair, right? Um, and you are never able to change the hair color anymore, right? So let's improve our model. So now we have as a data name, hair color, and I add also the NHS number and all this data gets set in the constructor. So we have here, as the constructor takes three arguments, name, NHS and hair color. Um, we also create a default constructor here for person, which is a typical UK representative, call it chain do, which, uh, which has a fake NHS number and, and some real hair color. So we can a easily create persons, person objects um, with this default person. Okay, uh, but this person should be able to dye the hair. So we, we now have our getters, get name, get hair color, but there's no way to set the name again. Yeah, we remove this function. It's not there anymore. But we add for the hair color, the dye hair. So we say a new color 
that you can dye. Maybe it's not possible when you have a black hair, for example, to dye the hair immediately blue. You have to first dye it white and then from white to blue or something like that. All this kind of logic can be implemented in such a method. Yeah, okay. Let's have a look how this is implemented and how this can be used. When we use it, well, we instantiate boss. Now we specify boss and color black initially. That's okay. And then we say dye hair color blue and we print it. We can have another person, Jane, and we can print Jane. So let's have a look. Here is a simplified code where we remove any chess because it didn't fit on the paper. But I think it's trivial to implement it. Okay, so our constructor, it takes name as a constant a reference to a string. It takes a hair color and it sets the name and the hair color. Right? This is a typical way of initializing data. You use a const reference because we shouldn't be able to change the name, but we want to provide the name and to transfer it efficiently. That's why we use the reference, call by reference here. Okay, we have a default constructor where we set name and hair color. And we know we could have done that in the initializer list over here instead of putting it here in the body of the method. But I decided to put it here for simplicity. Okay, we have dye hair. And we, here we don't do any check because that's our first implementation. But later we may want to add this kind of check to make it more robust. Yeah, that's really the idea that you can change the logic, improve your code, without changing the interface. Yeah, I don't have to change inter dye hair and how it's used. I just change under the hood what is happening. So this really provides this encapsulation and hides the implementation details. Good, we have get hair name and get hair color and everything of this is like before. So now what we can do, we can create a hierarchy of this person that we just built with the properties which is our improved model, which, which has a better initialization. Now we have a model of a student. So what is a student? A student is a person, right? So it has all those data properties and it is all this kind of operations that you can do with them. So we add, however, we want to extend, of course, the person by certain properties. In this case, we add the student ID and we have when one the student is created, we have to provide a get student ID. And we want to change print to also print additional information about the student, particularly the student ID. So when you see we have here print method and here the print method, they are the same methods, names, but they print slightly different extended information. So let's have a look how we implement this. And here I show you now how this works with the initializer list for reason. So in the original person, we take those three arguments, full name, NHS number, and hair color. And in the initializer list, we initialize name with full name. So this is the variable that we put as a value. And this is the variable that we set. And we initialize NHS with NHS number and hair color with hair color. Note that this is now basically the only case, as far as I know, where you can use the same name. So I use here hair color, which represents the value. And here I use the same identifier, but they specify different thing. Okay. In this case, it specifies our data member hair color, but in this case, it specifies the formal argument hair color. The compiler knows what is meant because initializer list works only on data objects. Okay. So we can have here an empty constructor body and as protected via his hair color name and edges. NHS. We actually do it now as protected. The reason is that we want to use it in a student. And in the student, we have to write now the constructor. And in the constructor now, we have to get all the data that is needed for the parent class, which is person. So we need a full name, an NHS number, and a hair color. But now we also need for our current class, the student ID. Okay, so you see, when we, when we create the student, we have to provide now more information. And then this information has to be distributed correctly on the parent class person. So that's why in the initializer list, we, we initialize person with full name, NHS number and hair color, calling the person 
constructor, so three arguments. But also we need to set the student ID of the student class, which is also protected. And uh, now this works seamlessly. If we would have tried to move it into the body, the question would have been, how can we actually change the values of NHS number, hair color and full name? Yeah, it, would, it would be tricky. So we have to call from a constructor in the initializer list other constructors. Okay, we have a getter, return student ID and in print, we actually access the data members directly, name, NHS, hair color. Note that this example would have allowed us to use get name and get hair color. So it would have allowed us to really make those attributes private instead of protected here. Yeah, it would have worked, slight code changes and everything would have worked seamlessly. So how do we use it? Well, we see here we have a person boss, you know, boss 4711, NHS number color black, we print it, we dye the hair to blue, it works. Then we have a student max. Now this takes the name, the NHS, the color, and again a student ID and we can print it. Okay, so very simple examples. Um, please try to approach us if you have any issues and struggle with any of the current examples. Try them out, of course, you can find them in our Git repository. So what we did today, we looked at examples that in introduce variants of object-oriented modeling, discussed a little bit different ways of doing it. Then we looked a bit more in detail of how inheritance works in terms of divisibility. We took a look at private, protected and public in inheritance visibility. And with protect protected or private inheritance, there is a relationship becomes hassle. Um, yeah, and of course you need more practice to this because initially it takes quite a while to wrap your head around. So don't give up, work, work on this, and I'm sure you will get it soon. Looking forward to meet you next week.